What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is June 6th of 2018. Well folks, it's time for a Coins of the Month video here on the Data Dash channel and today we have a wide range of projects to discuss as we step into the month of June. Now, as you all can probably tell by the date of the video, I'm a tad bit late on getting this video out. I usually get my Coin of the Month videos out a few days before the month we're discussing in order to give people some time to do some extra research on the projects. However, I've just been really stacked on producing a lot of different types of videos, guys, including my quarter three 2018 ICO picks that I'm currently watching. So stay tuned for that and much more coming down the pipeline. However, today we're going to be talking about the month of June and some picks that I've been watching. As we step out of the month of May where we had a nice corrective period in crypto markets but also have held at higher level valuations than what we saw in March, it's looking like both in Bitcoin and in altcoins we're setting up for a potential bull run over the month of June and the preceding months afterwards. So with this we have to find some projects that not only have strong fundamentals but also have some solid price action in regards to finding some good discounts in the market. So without further do let's go ahead and dive into that again a few things to be clear on guys this is not financial advice this is solely just my opinion again if you guys find any interest in any of the three projects we discussed today i have a ton of resources down below that you can look into and get a good head start in learning a little bit deeper into all the projects we discuss along with that as well i haven't received payment for any of these projects and last but not least i'm going to be sharing with you guys what i'm invested in what i'm trading as well as what i'm not holding so that all being realized, let's go ahead and dive into our first project. The first one we're going to be discussing is Nano, formerly known as Rayblox. So for those of you who have stuck around with the Data Dash channel for quite some time, you guys know that I was a pretty early founder in regards to the technology of Rayblox. I've known about it since late November and uh, early December, and now it's obviously gone through the rebranding and it's become much more known. And Nano really has something that still stands out comparative to most players in the market. So for those of you out there who know my passions, I'm huge on peer-to-peer -peer digital capital. Cash. I'm huge on the concept of removing the third middle party banks and financial institutions and truly bringing peer-to-peer -peer digital cash to life. However, when we take a look at currencies well known like Bitcoin and Litecoin and Dash and all these other different solutions out there, they're all blockchain based. And blockchains don't horizontally scale well, they have fees and they don't have quick confirmations. All the things we need in a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency. And Nano offers all of these things because it doesn't use blockchain. It stands out by using a directed acyclic graph or a DAG known as the block lattice. And the block lattice is actually starting to be used for a wide variety of other technologies as well. There's a lot of upcoming projects, uh, one of which I might mention in my ICO picks that's using the same technology for IoT applications. So in this case though, however, for Nano, Nano itself is a really, really exciting project. I've been keeping up with it for quite some time. It offers instantaneous zero fee transactions and practically infinite scalability, as we'll talk about in regards to the tech here in just a minute. But again, I'm really excited about the project, have been for quite some time, but the big things that have been really luring me in is not only the solid fundamentals, which again, we'll take a look at here in just a minute, but the reduction in valuation, the discount we have in the market right now. Nano right now is trading a little bit under $4 at around a $500 million valuation. And if you guys know how crazy Nano went over the past few months back in November, December, and January, you'll know that this thing absolutely skyrocketed. With the growth in popularity, people started to realize how powerful this tech was. And we saw not only a major increase in volume up towards $100 million in volume, but along with that as well, up to $34. And now, We've seen a nice steady slope downwards towards a much more stable valuation at around $4. And with this, we're still maintaining a high level of volume. And along with this as well, with the price down here, we've practically gotten it down to one-tenth of the price we were seeing at the peak. Now, of course, again, that probably wasn't a steady valuation for Nano to be at. But again, it's nice to see this kind of discount and get it back into much more of a stable range, especially the previous resistance point we saw back here in December. To have the price down in this range, and in fact, generally a little bit lower, this is definitely providing an opportunity where I think we could possibly see Nano move higher. It reminds me similar, uh, the similar kind of price action we saw with Bitcoin's initial rise, where we saw Bitcoin go from a few dollars all the way up to 1,100 and having a nice steady correction afterwards, where we've got a nice cupping in the price action. And I think we're gonna start to see the rise on it. I think we have that opportunity because the fundamentals are strong, as well as the price, which we're gonna be taking a look at in just a bit. 
But I want to spend some time to talk about this and clear up a little, a few things because I know I've talked about Rayblox, uh, you know, since it was Rayblox, and I've been talking about Nano generally a lot. However, there's a great article here by Brian Pugh. He's done two of these. Uh, these are stress tests on the Rayblox network, and I want to spend some time to clarify this because it shows just how powerful the network is. But I've misspoken in the past about this, and I was actually a little bit worried about these results because I was misreading them. So I do apologize for that in that sense. But there's a lot of exciting facts that come out of the stress test, and I wish we. Got Got more of these in regards to blockchain technology to really understand how far these currencies, as well as just generally these networks, can process transactions. So basically, Brian had run a, a stress test on one singular computer on one node and basically was able to get all types of different ranges depending on the amount of accounts and the amount of transactions that he ran on this single computer. Now keep in mind, he's running multiple different accounts, and this is where I had the misinterpretation, but he's running this all on one general computer and one node. And look at the amount of transactions he's able to, to not only process, but how much he's able to process per second. For in this case, 500 transactions. He was able to get a remote peak transaction per second of for on one second average of 263 transactions a second. So. Again, guys, I recommend you go look through here. There's some awesome visualizations on it, the uh, the Visualized Explorer where you can actually see real-time transactions going through where he flooded the network with transactions, and it was able to work. All feeless, all practically instantaneous, and a very, very high level of scalability from one node. This is the, the important thing to keep in mind with DAGs, guys, is DAGs for the most part are generally horizontally scalable. So. In the case of Nano, for example, where he's just running this on one node, the more nodes we have on the network, the more this could scale out and scale at a very, very high pace. If you can get that amount of transactions on that symbol of a node, just imagine if you're able to get a variety of nodes in the network helping to support it, as well as having higher level nodes that have better bandwidth, as well as better hardware behind them. This is the exciting part about Nano. And I can't wait until we can see some further stress tests on the project itself. But there's a lot of great developments outside of the fundamental tech. They have their mobile wallets coming out. They've already had the Android app, which is in beta on the Google Play Store, so you can download and use it now. And I've even signed up. There's 9,000 people who are currently testing the Test Flight iOS app for Nano. I, I had requested this a while back. I might have missed the email, maybe. But I submitted my email to see if I can get a piece of the actual and then I want to try it on my iPhone. I've been wanting to use this because I love actually using peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. And along with that as well, again, like I said, it's on Android, so you guys can definitely check it out if you want. Now going on here to the TA side of things. Look, we've talked about the fundamentals. I like the project. I've been a big fan of it for some time. The real thing that's coming to me for this month is the fact that it's at a discount. As we take a look here at Nano, we can see that ever since it's listed on Binance, we have had a nice correction in price. And with Nano here, here, I think that possibly around 5,000 Satoshis, this could be a decent entry point. Again, it's just my opinion. You got to go out there and do your own TA, guys. But for the most part, what I'm generally looking for here in the sense of strategy, I am holding some Nano right now, and I'm planning to do both a, a half trade, half long term investment in regards to the project. And I'll go ahead and share with you guys the strategy of how I'm approaching it. So, generally, right now, I added my position yesterday uh, during this candle over here around 5,000 sats. So, I'm generally flat at my position right now. However, what I'm generally looking for is to potentially uh, do a trade and investment. My stop loss for my entire position is at 4,500 sats. So if we go there, it's going to lock me out of my position and we move on to another project for the moment and wait for it to possibly go even lower. But for Nano in this case, I think this double bottom is going to hold along with that. It's at a nice discount, as we already talked about, a four ton, um, one fourth discount compared to what it was back at its peak in uh, January. And along with that as well, we've gotten a nice double bottom down here, a slope in the price section, and some increased volume here. So as we continue to get developments in the project, I think this is going to possibly be able to move up to not only 8,000 sats, where I'll lock in 25% of my position, but also up here to 10,000 sats, where I'll do another 25%. And the other 50%, I really do believe this is going to continue to run up, guys, if we get the altcoin cycle. I think I'm going to let the other 50% just continue to ride, and we'll see what happens as it goes to the altcoin cycle. And I'll raise my stop as we go. But for the most part, I'm really excited about this project. Again, it's the reason why it's the first one I want to talk about, because again, the volume's starting to come back in, the price is getting at a nice Steady discount and the sell side has turned to slow down. Those are all decent signs that we could possibly be expecting a rebound in this. So that's what I'm generally looking for, guys. Again, I've got my stop set. We'll see what happens in regards to Nano. Next up, we got to talk about it. Nulls. Nulls is my second pick for the month. As many of you know, I've been discussing it for quite some time, even before it started trending. 
of getting into serious volume. I talked about it when I think it was around 20 or $30 million in valuation. It's a Chinese-based project. It's basically an easy onboarding blockchain platform that allows businesses to use a plug-and-play, uh, a plug-in style um, application for blockchain to build applications and actually utilize this in an easy fashion. Again, the ease of use factor is probably one of the biggest selling points for nulls. And it's a big issue with a lot of protocols nowadays because they require you to be some smart contract developer in Solidity or someone who knows how to build smart contracts in general. So with something like nulls, I think it's very important to have these easy onboarding uh, factors in regards to nulls as a platform. And I think that right now as well, the big selling point for me outside of the fundamentals, which we've obviously talked about, is the TA side of things, the price. Whereas this is still holding at a nice discount in regards to where I think it could go long term. It's only sitting around $150 million valuation for protocols that's relatively cheap, especially a Chinese-based a Chinese uh, Chinese based project with the kind of fundamentals that it has. But along with this as well, we have a solid cup and handle formation in regards to price that's been building up ever since January. And along with that, we've been able to hold a lot of the gains generally as well that we saw, which hasn't happened with a lot of altcoins. So the fact that we've had this nice cup and handle formation and are coming close to 45,000 sats, which again, I think we need to find support there along with that on the 50 day. If we can get that and we can get an increase in volume on altcoins generally, I think this is going to reverse and start to trend back upwards. Again, this has been more of a long term hold for me, guys. I have my position on nulls that I've been holding. Uh, again, I've been bullish on the project since back here in early December. And with that, again, I think this has got a lot of more legroom to move in the sense of upside price action. Again, if this goes down below 45,000 sats and actually breaks below 4,000 sats, I'm going to close a, a tad bit of my position, lock in some of my profits, because I have made a nice return so far to what I've been holding. But for the most part, I'm going to hold it here. Let's see what happens. Again, this is something that I'm not so much setting any targets to sell. I think it's just going to go towards a much higher level as we go into the altcoin cycle in June. So a little more simple on this. Again, I've got my long-term hold on it. Going on here to POA. Now, I want to be transparent with you guys. I'm not holding any POA at the moment, but I do like Proof of Authority Network. I've been bullish on this one for quite some time. Made a nice trade on it back in April, uh, but however, it triggered my stop in regards, to the, uh, in regards to the profit that I made on it when it started to correct back over, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But for those of you who don't know about POA, POA is a, a side chain off of Ethereum that allows people to uh, use the Proof of Authority consensus mechanism and to easily utilize blockchain technology. Again, putting an emphasis on on a consensus mechanism that gives a little bit more control towards the different corporations and entities that are going to be building applications on top of blockchains and using a very unique consensus mechanism. So if you guys haven't learned anything about how it works, I recommend you go through the tech, learn about how POA works, learn about how it's an interesting uh, addition to the Ethereum network, and along with that as well how the consensus mechanism works. So going on here though, I want to talk a little bit about the price because I think compared to most small cap protocols, POA has offered one of the best discounts. Right now we're sitting around a $73 million valuation. And originally we saw this peak out at around 180 million back in early May. And ever since then, we've been on a nice correction, which is starting to slow down. So again, we had talked about trading this. I, I think I had built some positions back here on POA in regards to the rise, looking for a reversal. And we later got that and continued much higher. However, with the correction we've seen recently, we've gone from a little bit above 10,000 Satoshis all the way down to 4,711. So with this, we've seen more than a 50% correction compared to Bitcoin as well as with Bitcoin depleting, and we haven't seen much volume come to the sell side over here. So with a lot of big buyers back here who have bought positions, and obviously we can see there's been no matching volume to meet the sell side of this, I think that we're at a moment where people could possibly be looking to make additions. Because again, this is where we saw some of the big buyers come in here. We saw some of the big candles come in around this price range. And it served as a nice support level, which is previous resistance at some levels over here, where POA could possibly find support. So I haven't made an addition to POA uh, network just yet, but what I'm looking for right now is this for potentially for this to come back down to 4,500 sats. I'll build the position if it hits that price level. My stop is gonna be relatively tight around 4,250 sats. If it hits that level, I'm closing out of my position, but the risk to reward is definitely nice. I'm doing a 50% lockout at 6,000 Satoshis as well as 7,000 being my other 50%. Actually, sorry, scratch that, I apologize. Wrong on that, 50% here. 25% here and let the other 25% run going into the altcoin cycle. So that's my general play of POA network here. Again, I think it could run into the altcoin cycle, but this is more generally of a bottom trade here. Again, a big thing you guys can always do is realize that a lot of these big buyers, it's something I always tell people to look at. You don't know who's buying, but you know that the volume was strong here back on April 7th. 
And again, if they were buying around this range, this means that the institutions or the larger investors are looking to buy at this price range. They're looking to add. And you can see, just like it did over here, we got a rebound the other day off that price range. It held support there. I think it's going to hold there again. I would say not to get too greedy. You don't always have to get it exactly at 4,500 sats. But if it interests you, definitely around that range is at least where I'm going to be adding. So that being realized, guys, I'd like to hear what you all think about all three projects we talked about. Do you think they're definitely going to do well going into the altcoin cycle? Do you have another opinion? Do you think they're not going to do so well? Do you have some other project that I didn't mention. If you do, mention it down in the comments down below and tell me why you like the project. Mention the fundamentals. Mention the TA. Let me know the details on it, guys, and let's get a discussion going. But anyways, guys, we've got a lot of other video and content coming down the pipeline, so stay tuned on the channel. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay tuned.